Today on Parish Profiles, we'll visit a small but vibrant community in rural Fresno County with the need to expand beyond its present church capacity. After that, we'll travel down Highway 99 to West Bakersfield to see how the newest Catholic parish in the Diocese of Fresno finally has their own magnificent worship and office space after seven years of praying and building community at a public high school. It's all coming up on Parish Profiles. From its early days as a mission church in the early 1940s, St. Lucy's community has been rightly proud of its very rich artistic tradition. Anne Magana, daughter of Mexican-born artist Luis Magana, opens our program today by sharing what her father's unique liturgical art still means to her and St. Lucy's parish 50 years after he created it. And what can you tell us about your father's involvement in the artistic design of this magnificent church of St. Lucy's and Fowler? Jim, my father was one of the artists that came together with many other artists that put beautiful things into this church. Uh, for instance, the Stations of the Cross that are here, they're four feet by eight feet. They're out of redwood and they're all hand done. Um, also, we have a... Um, a, the sanctuary lamp that my dad had and at one time they, they were, there were many there's one that survived and it's uh, sitting next to the tabernacle and those lamps used to be on the um, altars here on the communion rails and the uh, tabernacle was also made by, by my father and it's made out of metal and then some of the same rocks that you see here on the terrazzo floor and then also the um, he did a depiction of the um, sacraments so they are on the back wall and they are made out of a very thick metal so a, a nice wrought iron your family is really seen in this church not just your dad tell us about the modeling that your family did for this. Well, that that's um, a great story. My father um, loved to use the people that he knew, and so I, I think the gentlemen that model for Christ were also part of the community. And then my mother, specifically, she was um, wherever you see a woman or the depiction of Mary, um, she is the model for that, um, those stations. And then my brother Stephen was a baby at the time, and he is the model for um, one of the uh, stations as well. And in fact, Stephen was one of the first children to be baptized here in the church once the church was um, um, open. Now, one piece that I know you can tell us a lot about because it's one of your favorites is the large crucifix that once hung right over the altar. Now it's on a wall. Could you share with us some of your love for that? Sure. Um, the cross is uh, the crucifix is full size depiction of Christ on the cross. The the wood itself is all hand chiseled. It's um, very thick redwood, and then the um, the body of Christ is actually carved or it's cut out of um, an old automobile that we had in the yard, and which is. You know, it's very typical of the artwork of my father was he would use found items that you know, were laying around and um, make something really beautiful out of them. And so one of the really, uh, the thing that, that is close to my heart about this is I remember being a little girl and my father cutting the, um, the crown of thorns out and I remember it was flat and then he would take his um, welding um, torch and then heat it up and then twist it, heat it and twist it, but it was, I think the memory is about the hands moving. It, and, you know, if you think about it, you've got these, you, this beautiful life in his hands and he's bringing life 
to the, the, this crown of thorns, which is metal, and most people think of it as coal. And so it's, it's just this beautiful thing that is a memory of mine, and um, you can see it in, in the, um, the work that he did. And it also became sort of a focal point for how this arc-like architecture. Tell us about that. I'm glad you brought that up because um, the architecture, if you look at it, it's just beautifully layers of wood that have been um, carved to look like the bottom of an arc upside down. And they all actually lead to the center of the altar, which hung, which is where the, this crucifix hung. So it all comes together and it's just this this beautiful um, sort of a circle of things. Everything comes together. You you have the lines drawing you to the center of the church, which is, you know, the most important part of this beautiful church. Now, one small detail is a veil, which is gorgeous, but it even has another backstory. Tell us about it. Well, um, you know, like the crucifix is my favorite, and so is the um, the veils. There are two stations of the cross that have this veil work on there. The veil has um, its lace. It, it, the way my dad carved it was when you look at it, it's so um, thinly done. It's not carved deep into the wood. So it gives you that beautiful feeling of lace and lightness. And the, the pattern for that lace was actually off of um, a vestment that Father Van Lund wore here during that time. And it was at the bottom of his vestment, and it was actually tatted by his sister, who was a nun of the Netherlands. And your, your family has been affected by this, beginning with your dad, your mom, yourself, your siblings, your children. What effect, personally, has it had on your family to see your dad's work? Uh, us as family members know how amazingly um, gifted my father was. Um, this this church um, will live forever, and um, for us, it's just this huge sense of pride because, w you know, even though we have art pieces, this is where my dad started. This is you can tell by the Stations of the Cross that as he did them, um, they got better and better and better. And he's he's all self-taught. Um, I have twin boys, and I had brought them here t for a service. And we started talking about the artwork and um, just showing how be the beauty that, and the love that Grandpa put into all of this. And one of my sons said, you know, this is absolutely amazing, Mom. He says, this is Grandpa's art gallery. It'll be here forever. You know, so, um, you know, for us, it's just, it, it, it has followed through the generations. We have been married here. We have had um, first communions here in this family. Um, we have had baptisms in this family and, you know, and funerals and get-togethers and whatever else, um, but it is a treasure. One final thought, Anne. Like Michelangelo, it seems like your dad did want to sign something in particular. Tell us about that station. Um, it is the last station. It's the Pietà uh, version of um, uh, my father's idea of how he wanted to finish the um, Stations of the Cross. And you and I have spoken about Michelangelo and how he only signed one or two pieces of his artwork. Well, the only signature in all of this artwork is actually in the folds of Mary. And she's holding Christ um, uh, at the very end. And of course, the veil is there, um, but there is one signature left that's there. So, and it's a lot, it, it says a lot about my father who was a very humble man. If Luis Magana's art brings us back to the establishment of St. Lucy's Parish, David Cardenas, Fowler's mayor and St. Lucy's most active member, shares what the parish is trying to do to make room in its church building for St. Lucy's ever-growing congregation. David, what can you tell me as mayor of the contribution of the parish of St. Lucy's to your beautiful town of Fowler? Well, Jim, as mayor, uh, everything that we have in, in, this, in our city, uh, we're so proud of everybody, uh, different uh, organizations, different ethnic churches that we have. But St. Louis, for, for sure, it, it outstands uh, as one of the very important assets to our community, where our people, 
people of God have a place to worship where they can go every day or go on Sundays and worship God, uh, where we, we receive the sacraments. So the Catholic religion, having St. Lucy in-house, in, in town, uh, have the confidence that the church is always there for the, our community. So we are so proud that we have a church, mainly that we have a priest in our church because of the shortage of priests. We're very fortunate that we have our own priest, Father Theo. He's a wonderful priest. He, you know, as all priests, and I'm going to say in general, they're all blessings from God. And we have one of the, one very, very blessed St. Lucy's with Father Theo. We're very proud of him. How has the community grown and changed over the many years, David? I've been in this community close to 50 years, and I have seen our community starting when I first moved, I think we were around 2,000 people. Today we have our approaching 6,000, and I have seen a lot of growth in this community. This community is one of the best in the valley. It's very quiet community. A lot of professionals use our community for a sleeping only, a sleeping mode, because they come, they buy houses, they work in Fresno, the big city of Fresno, but they come and sleep in our city. Uh, as mayor, I have seen our city rapidly growing, but a very, what I call a very growth, intelligent or smart growth. So we have seen grown our city in a very beautiful way, attracting professional people, attracting a lot of farm labor, because this is our rural community. It's a farm labor community. We have a lot of farmers that surrounds our city. So therefore, we have grown in a very big way but it's in a very smart way. Now, speaking of growth, what about the growth of St. Lucie's, the need for more facility here at the parish? You know, I can remember back, and I was not here when this happened back in the 40s and 50s, when we had the first Catholic church located on the corner of 6th and uh, Fresno Street. Uh, before they had that little church, I, re I remember people saying that they were worshiping, I mean, having mass in houses wow. or buildings or even in farms. Wow. But then they got this little church that very quickly got outgrown. And back in the 60s, they moved to this beautiful site that we have today. And in, back then, 1963 to 65, this beautiful church was built because, you know, the Catholic community has been grown and grown. And to this day, if you come on a, a holiday or a, even on Sunday, this place gets full. And there's place, there's people outside through all the three. Look at this church. This is one of our jewels in the valley. As far as church, the way it's been built, oh, yeah. the art that it has inside that it was built by local, you know, family with their own hands. So this is a very beautiful community. I mean, church that the community really treasures. So you have a planning committee about expansion. How's that going? The planning commission of the expansion of the church is formed right now for about 12 to 15 people. And we have met monthly up to this day trying to find the tools that is necessary to create the expansion. We have the plans already for the expansion. And we have, we're trying to find the ways to make it happen to get in the, the community involved too, so it can be a reality. Now, besides the money, what would be your biggest challenge uh, that you have in trying to expand a beautiful church like this? You know, one of the big challenges, and it has been always for years, is that we have had problems in the church, on the structure of the church, the way it's built. We have rock, we have steel, we have wood, and we have glass. And some of those, those elements today present a problem because they contract and expand. You know, and so one of the things very important that, uh, and I think the engineers are really having a little problem with, with today's materials, how are they going to be able to do the expansion bounding these elements that we have in place. But that's going to be a challenge that I leave that to the engineer department. The and idea is more. between 80 to 100, and uh, the expansion will serve for the future of this community that keeps growing to help us go into the future for the next 25 to 50 years into the future. And that's the idea. I think that if we can make that happen, St. Louis will be in a greater shape and form so people throughout the years can continue coming here to worship and be a part of this community that we call Fowler, in our home that we call St. Lucy's Catholic Church. Bakersfield has always been the second largest city in the Diocese of Fresno, and year after year, it continues to grow. 
Next on Parish Profiles, we'll see how four parishes gave up some of their parish territory and also some of their very active pastoral leaders to help establish a brand new parish with its own particular identity.